Hey y'all, welcome to the Penny Pinching Preppers channel. I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper and uh, today um, we're doing a, a new twist on an old product I made a long time ago. Uh, we're just going to call it the uh, um, self-lighting fire tender. Well, we'll keep it simple, alright? But uh, guys, if uh, this video does something for you do me a favor get down below get them algorithms going I don't care how you do it or if you do it well I kind of do but I'd appreciate it but if it deems worthy get down there and, and, and do a little something for me uh, so I told you what the product is it's it's basically just a you know self-lighting fire tender um, it definitely works pretty darn good <clears throat> And uh, what you're going to need for this product is uh, some Strike Anywhere matches. I recommend this brand if you can make it out. It's uh, Carrite. They actually work really good the way they're supposed to, unlike those diamonds. Um, you're going to need three different types of fuel. <clears throat> you're going to need... Um, paraffin wax this is white flaked paraffin wax and it needs to be in a can like that you're gonna need petroleum jelly same thing in a can gonna need that and then beeswax I like the droplets it melts quicker um, and it's easier to measure I buy in bulk can't have enough beeswax but uh, another can of that and then you'll need cotton rolls. You can get them on Amazon. You can get the beeswax, the paraffin wax. You can get all on Amazon. Um, but these little cotton rolls, like what you you see at the dentist, and uh, if you go onto Amazon, they come in different numbers and amounts, and um, some of them are sterilized, some are unsterilized. Get the unsterilized ones, save you some money. Um, but yeah, one of these these, these uh, cotton rolls, it's like anywhere from I think twenty five up to like five or six, seven hundred. I can't remember. It's it's ridiculous. So just get what you need. I'm not gonna leave nothing down below. It's just simply called a cotton roll. Um, might have to put oral cotton roll, but I doubt it. Um, <clears throat> and then you're gonna need. Two bam, uh, bamboo skewers, guys. Two bamboo skewers. Um, and then last but not least, as far as something you got to put together, just take a piece of cardboard, or I used a candy box, wrap it in some uh, uh, parchment paper or wax paper, whatever you got on hand. Just make sure it's good and tight. It, it doesn't want to slip around. Wrap it around there real good. And then what you'll need for the project to, to make it is you're going to need a pot big enough, a pot big enough to put all three cans in at once because it will drive you nuts trying to get these all to go down separate. You'll be spending all day. <laughs> so pot big enough to fit all three. A way to heat that up. Got that off here onto the side. And uh, I'm not going to bore you with heating it up, so I'm going to go ahead and shut you guys down so, you know, you actually, you know, hopefully make it to the end of the video. Uh, nothing worse than boring people off. I, I know I've done it enough. Um, but, oh, I forgot. I didn't grab it. But you'll need tin foil as well. Okay? So a roll of tin foil. Um, preferably heavy duty. Um, it, it's what you wrap the project in to, to keep it safe and it also uses as a uh, pan so that you don't lose any fuel and it burns a lot longer. Um, if you haven't seen the last video, um, I'll leave it in the description box below. It actually shows me using the product, building a fire with it, you know, so you get the idea of how it works. Um, and the other thing is if you can't get strike anywhere matches or all you can get are them diamond ones, I should say anyways, I'm also going to leave in the description box, a, uh, uh, from an, 
I can't think of his name right now, but uh, it, it's going to be a, a DIY on how to make your own Strike Anywhere matches, and they work really, really good. Um, I, I don't recommend Diamond for this product. I, I really don't, um, unless you got blessed with a good box with a lot of good white on, on that head. Um, but uh, So anyways, I'm going to get to heating this up, and I'll be back with you guys in a few. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, in that pot, add some water and make a double boiler. Just enough to cover the bottom that, uh, you know, the the uh, tin cans inside don't start to float because, you know, they're lighter than the water. Uh, so, yeah, double boil it. That's why you're putting it in the pot. I don't know how I missed that, but don't forget it. Okay, well, I'm sitting here waiting... I'm getting a little bored because it does take a little time to melt this stuff down sometimes. But uh, you're probably all wondering why three different types of fuels, right? Well, I want to tell you about two of them right off the bat, all right? Which is the petroleum jelly and the beeswax, all right? If for any reason you go to use this and the wind's too heavy and you don't have it protected well enough, um, even though it does pretty good in the wind... Uh, once it gets started, it ain't going out, but that initial striking of, of it to get it lit, you know, it's like a match. It, it, it can easily, you know, go either way. <clears throat> Just depends on your match skills and how bad the weather is. But uh, you need to be able to still bring a spark to it, you know, your backup, your ferrocium rod, which most of us tend to have or carry, you know, that, your backup source, or your Bic lighter, um, but uh, you can't just light these things, you know, willy-nilly, you, you gotta, you gotta break them open to expose the fibers inside, and if you only use the beeswax, it'll be hard, too hard to get into the fibers, so the petroleum jelly is what you'll do first and I'll, I'll show you in a minute and it keeps the cotton roll pliable and soft and easy to get to and then you back it up with the uh, the beeswax next which gives it a, a secondary fuel and what you're getting is petroleum jelly burns hot and fast beeswax burns hot and slow so when you mix the two together you get a faster start with a longer burn that's hotter okay so it, it makes more sense to have the two together than just one or the other if you're looking for a good long-term uh, fuel source guys so uh, as far as the reason there's a third one I'm gonna keep you guessing you just gonna have to watch the video All right, guys, let's get into this a little bit more. Um, excuse the lighting. You still be able to see pretty good. Uh, but one of those days, I'm not cared about light, uh, how the lighting is. We're just doing this down and dirty. Let's get to it. Okay, so I'll bring you down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So you got these cotton rolls, right? And the two bamboo skewers. And on one of the bamboo skewers, might be kind of hard to see um, I made the tip more sharp and less of an aggressive edge uh, to make it more needleish and then on the other one I just sharpened the the tip up a little bit okay so know which one is which and you want to take the one that you uh, you know took the edge down on on you know not just made it sharp but made it a little thinner you want to take the middle of the cotton roll, all right, and you want to work it in. And you want to kind of take it slow at first. Um, you know, some of these are tighter, some of these are looser. But if you're not careful, you'll just push the cotton out the back end. Um, and no matter what, you might run into this one or two times. But just keep working it the best you can until it works through. It eventually will. Uh, and if it doesn't, 
which I might run into that here. This might have been one of the tougher ones. That's see, see, it's trying to push out a little bit. Not all of them are going to do this. You'll you'll get a couple that'll want to do it, and you'll probably have to resharpen your stick afterwards. Which, uh, yeah, that's what I need to do. So I'm going to take a quick second. Um, I didn't even get all the way through with this one. Um, go figure. I, I record it and it doesn't go quite as smoothly as it did for the rest of them. <laughs> but uh, sharpen it back up, I guess, and see if we can get it to work its way through. just not going to do it guys I got one of those complete stubborn ones so uh, you, you get the point I'm going to start over real quick um, and uh, get it through this one I'm not going to bore you with it but you get the point of what you have to do and trust me they're not always this hard most of them will not be okay so once it starts to poke through you'll see all right, try to keep it as straight as possible, but there's no guarantee, right? I, I went off angle, but you can see it's poking up there. A little bit of cotton might come out, but go ahead and pull it all the way through down to where there's just a little bit sticking out there. And then take the second one to make your life easier, put it down next to it and work it on through, all right? so that you've got two of these bamboo scurrows inside of it instead of just one. All right, and the reason being is it'll make it a lot more easier when we go to put the matches in. See, now I got two in there, and then we're just gonna push it down to the edge so it's flush there inside, okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take two Strike Anywhere matches, guys. You wanted to use two, all right? I, I failed trying to use one. It, it was just not enough. Use two. All right, match them up with the, the bamboo skewers. And this is just to get the matches in a lot easier. Um, you know, you guys could, you know, possibly use some sort of cotton product and, and roll it around and then I guess use the petroleum bit jelly and, and put a little bit on to hold it before you dip it. I just, I like the size, the shape, and the convenience of the cotton rolls, so that's what I, I do. So you end up with a product that looks kind of like that, all right? So what you want to do next, all right, is uh, you can either just use your fingers, but I usually use a pair of needle nose pliers. I've got my multi-tool on me here, so I'm going to use that. Um, but let's see. All right. Try to remember which fuel, but if you can't remember which fuel you did, the beeswax is, is easy. It's going to be dark. All right. It's between the petroleum jelly and the paraffin wax that you might have a problem with. Just dip your finger in it. All right. And give it a couple of seconds. And if it's the paraffin wax, it'll you know, turn white and feel like wax. If it's petroleum jelly, it's probably going to stay kind of liquidy. All right, so this is this is the the uh, paraffin wax. So we're going to start over here with the petroleum jelly. All right, that's that's number one is the petroleum jelly and <laughs> Take your needle nose pliers if you're going to use them and put them just below the match head, okay? Because we don't want to get petroleum jelly on the match head. We want to get it everywhere else. Go ahead and hold it in there, guys, right there, all the way in for, you know, 30 plus seconds. Because the more petroleum jelly it can suck in, you know, the longer it's going to last. Um, why it sits, I'm going to go ahead and pause you. Okay, after you've had it in there for a little bit, go ahead and take it out. All right, now it's a lot easier if you, you know, do a bunch all at once, but I already did a bunch. And I don't need a bunch more, so I'm just doing the one to show you guys how. But go ahead and, and place it on your uh, 
your piece of cardboard or a little box or whatever that you, you wrapped up in your, your parchment paper or uh, wax paper, whatever. All right, now you're going to put this in the freezer for a minimum of 10 minutes. Um, the reason being is we want to get it cold, so when we put it in the wax, more wax adheres to it and more smoothly. Um, in the old days, it would be uh, you dip it in water between the wax to, to do the same concept, but where you don't want to expose the tender to the water, so we're using the freezer, okay? So put it in the freezer, minimum of 10 minutes, get it as cold as possible. The colder you can get it, the better you are. All right, so once it gets nice and cold, we're gonna do the same thing. Just put the needle nose pliers right below the match head onto the match stick, right? And then we're gonna dip the bee into the beeswax. One, let it sit for a second. Two, let it sit for a second. Three times. All right, now with it being so cold, every time you let it sit for a second, it allows just a little bit more beeswax to get on it. And then we're gonna put it back down on the uh, parchment paper or wax paper, whatever you used, and put it back in the freezer. Um, like I said, you'd usually go back and forth between water, but since we don't want to use water, we're using the freezer. And we're going to do this two more times, guys. Okay, out of the freezer for the first time, and back into the beeswax. One two three times and back on the parchment paper and back into the freezer it goes all right back in one two three times all right, so at this point, guys, we don't have to go back into the freezer. Just let that firm up just a little bit. It only takes a few seconds. In fact, I'm not even going to pause the video. All right, and the next step is the third fuel. And the point of this is, are these things are extremely waterproof, all right? But the match heads are not. And if you notice, we've been not dipping the match heads for a very good reason and that's being with the beeswax it's a lot stronger stiffer stickier wax all right and uh it's really hard to get off the match head but to keep it waterproof we're going to use our third fuel which is the paraffin wax and we're going to go ahead and dip just just up to the just up to the rim here getting all the match head all right, so down in there, just up to the rim, and then pull it out, give it a little spin, and uh, let that sit for a moment, and that paraffin wax will harden up a little bit, not as much as the beeswax, because um, paraffin wax melts at a much lower temperature than beeswax does. Um, that's part of the reason why these will be good in all sorts of weather is because no matter how hot it gets, no matter how cool it gets, it won't get brittle, it won't get runny and melty, it won't break, it will always work the way it's supposed to work, all right? So once that's done and the uh, paraffin wax is hardened up just a little bit, which it pretty much has now, um, we're going to go ahead and take a little piece of tin foil, three, three and a half inches by three, three and a half inches, somewhere in between there. All right. And uh, we're just going to put it on the tin foil and we're going to roll it right in the middle, leaving a little bit of space of tin foil on each side. Okay. And then once you get it rolled, just flatten the ends and, and fold it up. And be careful on the matchstick head that you don't damage the matchstick. And there you go, guys. Ready to be popped into your, your uh, fire kit. And that's a self-lighting fire tender. They'll last anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how good of a job you do. And uh, they work pretty good. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link in the video 
uh, in the description blocks below of the video showing how to use these, how well they work. It was actually a pretty windy day, so you get a good idea. Um, I'll leave that down below, and I'll also leave a description for the DIY Strike Anywhere matches if you can't find anything but diamond. Uh, guys, I'm not going to keep this video going any longer. It, it seems like it's long enough. Um, hope you enjoyed the, the video. I hope that you got something out of it and maybe something you might want to actually make, do, whatever. And uh, when you do, uh, do me a favor. Let me know. Um, I'm always curious to know if anybody actually ever tries my products. Uh, so... Hey guys, if you liked the video, do me a favor, get down below, do something and, and help them algorithms, you know, get moving and uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And at the end of the day, remember God's good, God great, and thank you for showing up.